We're going to discuss club selection here with regards to chipping and how to vary your flights and vary your distance using different clubs. Now I've mentioned in one of the earlier videos that my preference is for people to, as beginners or, or, or starting to learn how to chip the ball properly, is to use one club, get to know it, learn how to manipulate it. But in certain situations on the golf course, and we're going to need to learn how to vary your ball flight to get the ball to roll out more. So in this situation, we've got about a 25, 30 meter chip shot here. We've got plenty of green to work with and we're going quite a little bit up the hill at the end there. So a lob wedge is probably not the go here. We probably want something to roll the ball out a little bit better, but we can certainly still use lob wedge. Now I've got my three wedges here. I've got a pitching wedge, a sand wedge, and a lob wedge. You might even use a nine iron if you like. My preference is to use one of your wedges, but we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and, and, and use the three different lofted clubs here. So we're gonna start with the lob wedge first. So we're gonna use our base tip chipping technique for all three shots, which is to be the shoe distance away from the ball, play the ball towards your back foot, open your stance off slightly, keep your shoulders in line with your target, hands left, weight left. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead here and hit the lob wedge first. Okay, so that's gone up the hill, taken a little bit of spin and then stopped, which we would imagine it would, being a lob wedge, it's gonna spin the ball a little bit too much. So now we're gonna go with a sand wedge and do the same thing. We still wanna hit down, no matter what you're doing in chipping, you always wanna hit down and catch some of that grass. You wanna have the sensation that you're hitting the ball down into the grass rather than up in the air. So we've got our five rules again. Hands left, light hands, so the heaviness of the club feels heavy to you. That means you're holding it correctly in terms of grip tension. So there goes the sandwich that skipped past that first ball. I'm getting a little closer now. Certainly went lower than the first one. Now I'm going to go with my pitching wedge here. My pitching wedge is a 48 degrees. Now there's some wedges out there these days that are a lot longer, a lot, a lot uh, less loft, 46, 45 degree pitching wedges. They're really old school nine irons. Same thing here, we're just not going to need as big of a swing, so we're still following the same five rules. Ball off the one shoe distance from the ball is the distance we're going to stand. Place the ball off your back foot, slightly open stance, shoulders straight. Hands left, weight left. Now that's gone a lot lower. It skipped past the first ball, it's just gone past the second ball and we're virtually in tapping distance there now. So. That's certainly one way you can vary your flights. You will need to practice that quite a bit so that you've got fresh in the end of your fingers what's going to happen. What kind of a flight am I going to get out of my lob wedge? What sort of a flight am I going to get out of my sand wedge, keeping things the same? What flight am I going to get out of my pitching wedge, keeping things the same? And in this particular instance, the pitching wedge worked out better because we've got quite a distance to go and we've got some uphill to get to. Stick to the base technique, vary your clubs, but practice it so that it's fresh in your fingers. We hope that helps with your consistency and with your confidence for your chipping.